you um, uh, today. And, and before we start, let me tell you that you are looking gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And Sivo always looks extraordinary oh. uh, with his uh, magnificent plates and. So uh, do you? So look at your hairdo and all that. <laughs> you know something? At least I have to pay respect to you. You know I have to do what I can. <laughs> anyway, Sivo is from Malaysia, and uh, we are talking to him from Kuala Lumpur, which is actually the capital city of Malaysia, which is actually the ethnic origin and the motherland of Singapore. So that is very important to note. So whatever that's local food is actually Malaysian food, right? So uh, with that, on that note, I just want to put that into perspective because uh, at the end of the day, so much about urbanization and so on and so forth. Uh, what is truly Singaporean is also Malaysian, right? So uh, Siva, on that note, I will introduce you uh, formally for the sake of this interview. Mr. Sivaraja Natarajan is a trustee and the lighting designer for the Sutra Foundation in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. Here, it is significant to mention that he works very closely with Dato Ramli Ibrahim, who is mm. the artistic director and chairman of the Sutra Foundation. Now back to Siva. Siva has played an important role in the projection and advancement of the Sutra Foundation as a multi-dimensional creative establishment. Am I right, Siva? That's, that's the absolute truth. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So on, uh, can I just uh, move on straight away to the question? Is that yeah. okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, Siva, you see, these are just some guidelines uh, that I formulated. Feel free to add on whatever you think is appropriate. And I will also go along with you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay, Siva, you are indeed a fine arts graduate of the Malaysian Institute of Arts, right? Um, yes. Having had graduated in the 1990s, early 1990s. And uh, what is it that brought you into this field of vast creativity? Yeah. All right. How did you start? What was your inspiration, Siva? Was there somebody in your life that motivated you to come into this creative field? And so okay. on and so forth. Yes, yeah. All right. So basically, when I started in a, you know, when I joined the art college, I wanted to major in uh, figurative paintings and all that. So, yes. see, like MIA is the, you know, basically I was the only Indian graduate in the fine arts. So that was 1990, 1990 you know? So like when yes. I come out from the fine art department, I was the only Indian. I think being an Indian, I think like they are more concerned about putting their children, you know, in the other academic, like being a doctor, lawyer, engineers, you know, where yes, that is yes. like secure future. I think Absolutely. being an artist, like, uh, I think like people don't venture into that. I think my dad was very supportive. Then he understand my passion. Then he supported me by giving me, uh, by enrolling me in the art institution. So that is one. See, when I joined the art uh, institution, so like, um, I, I already know what I want. I said, I want to do figures. I'm not interested in doing landscape or anything, but I, I've done landscape and all this, you know, where, as we go in the, from the primary, secondary schools, you know, childhood days. So then when I say I want to major only in figurative. So figure in what? Figure in uh, in motion. So what is figure in motion? Mm. So the, the best thing is dance. Absolutely, yes. So I explore everything. So this is where during my college days, I used to go to Ramli studio in Kitty Wangsa and uh, every Wednesday I started sketching their dancers doing the rehearsals. So this is where like one day this I'll be during your college sketch. days, Siva? During yeah, your these college, are my college days. days. Oh, these I didn't know college. that. Yes. Yeah, That's so these are my college fact. days. So like, uh, I do that. So after I graduate, you know, then uh, Rami organized the exhibition. Then I did my exhibition on, on the dance, you know, on uh, on dance. And then slowly, I realized, uh, you know, uh, I move into the theater as well because like I used to help them on the backstage, you know, cleaning and all that. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. realized they were short of a stage manager. You know, uh, set designer. So I went into the stage manager, then I went to the set designing, and then some part I become a lighting designer. Yes. So it, it is like uh, you have to know, you see, in order to dance, you have to know music, you have to know a vocal, you, know, you have to understand everything. Same thing, like, uh, you know, in, uh, in uh, when you go into the uh, theater, you have to know everything. So I sort of uh, learn everything. Basically, it's like one is all interrelated. 
So you can't yes. separate, you know. So it's all so like I learn everything. That's why I become a lighting designer, a set designer, a production manager, because it's all interconnected. Absolutely, yes. And you need to know your trade well. So you need to know all facets. And exactly. There's no shortcut, and you you took the really uh, tough route. I I start from the stretch. You see, yeah. like uh, you start. You no, know, you have to start from everything. Whatever it is, I think you have to start from the bottom. See, for being an artist, I think what uh, Mr. Ilaraja was doing, I think that the foundation is very important. See, now people straight away go to abstract expressionisms and all that. I think before they break that, they go to then. I think they should have a foundation. Mm. See, once the foundation is strong, I think then you can break all the laws and all that. See, but being an artist, there is no formula, you know. But yes. you want to be an accountant, you have to do accounting. And you want to be a singer, you have to do vocal classes. Same thing if you want to be a painter. You have to sharpen your basic skills, understanding the anatomy, you know, the portrait structures, colors, the medium, the materials. When I was uh, listening to the questioners, I think like uh, they should uh, do a lot of uh, things on the material studies, you know. What yes. are the brushes? What are the materials, you know, you can uh, use? And uh, what are the effects of the materials, you know, like why every yeah. time you have to use a canvas, you can uh, paint on a wood, you can yes. paint it on a glass, you can paint it on a metal. And all that. So mm -hmm. this is all the experiment we do in our college days. Yes. When we are in the foundation, you do material studies. You know, you take mm -hmm. the junk from uh, you know the dump yard and all that. Then you pull it in. Then you paint on it. Then you see the durability. Whether it's but nowadays you can preserve anything. Like look at the American uh, contemporary art and all that. They take the scrap metal from the car garage and then they smash and thing. They put it as an insulation. Yes. <laughs> you know. Yes. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> The insulation, insulation is a very convenient term, and it almost exactly. anything goes. Anything is anything now. <laughs> <laughs> but then we can't dismiss that, also, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, it it's is still part creativity. Of that. Yes. You know, and at the end of the day, the, it's the thought that uh, thought and concept that really counts. Definitely, definitely. Know, beyond definitely. the material, and uh, yeah. anyway, it's also uh, quite uh, it, it's quite interesting that we have reached this era. Yeah. And then, uh, then we have to wait for another cycle. Then we go back to realism. Then we come back again to installation. Then back, you know, there's always a cycle that's going on in the creative element. You, you realize that, isn't it, Siva? I think, you know, I think it's a trend, you know. You see, yeah. like, uh, when you look into the artistry, mm -hmm. when you look into the artistry, you know, from the, the Greek to the Roman, you know, the, you know, the Stone Age, then the Greek, yes. the Roman, yeah. then comes the... The Dark Age, you know, where the Titan era, you know, it's like I think from the fourth century to the, yeah. the then the Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, everything comes in. Then like, um, see now it's like pop and modernism and all this. See like now there is no ism, yeah. so anything can be a ism, you know. Yes. So yes. there is no such thing as like a, this is a trend now, you know. See like uh, that the trend is like what you do. That is the trend. Yeah, yeah. The last time there is like. Whatever they start in uh, in Paris, in London they'll catch up. You see, like uh, you know, so like you see, like if, if it is like uh, if, if there's someone uh, sneeze in uh, in Paris, London will catch a cold. So what the effect <laughs> travels there? So yeah. the, think, that's how. I think you're the, into the, the COVID nineteen thing, so you're, I think. In, I'm not talking that. I'm, like, I'm using a <laughs> Sounds reference. like the COVID as well. <laughs> okay, I think now everyone is like yeah, has this phobia about it. But this is a saying. I know, know what, what you mean. It's just a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting uh, analogy, but I know what you mean. But having said that, you know, Siva, if something, if some ism is happen happening in the in, uh, in the Western world, there's also another ism that's happening in Southeast Asia and South Asia and West yes, Asia, yes. which has nothing to do with the isms of the of Europe. And we don't go no. into those isms. See, you, when yeah. you talk about the isms and all that, you know, the Renaissance and all that, you look into our Chola bronze and all that. Yeah, absolutely. I, say, I think the Indians has reached the Renaissance way before the Western. Oh, super point. Uh, point uh, you know, Siva, it's a see, super the point. Indians look at the when the Western were doing the, what do you call all these, uh, you know, the bronze, you know, like a Rodan mm -hmm. and all. I think that our Indians, uh, you know, the Chola period, is, they are very advanced. Right? You look into the bronze. No, so they are very advanced. So where do you categorize them? You, you categorize yes. them as, a, as what? They are the Renaissance. Timelessness you know, is the they category. Are the Western. <laughs> so is I this... think like the, we Asian, you know, like when you talk about Pan-Asian, you know, I think we have our, you know, like our own uh, this thing, you know, so we cannot... Uh, 
uh, when you compare our art and uh, our civilization culture to the West, you know. Very see, important we have, point. Like, uh, yes. We talk about because I'm my origin, like you know, the Indian. See, we take it from the you know the Mohenjo-daro era part, the Indian Indus Valley civilization. Yes. You know, so is much more older than any of these uh, you know the Western civilization. So I think like there is the art and culture, the tradition is much more older. I think like as time passed by, I think like people as sort of a uh, you know, they couldn't afford or I think it went. But I think I'm proud to say that I come from the tradition. I'm proud of it. And, and I'm proud of you for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of Rodan, you know, I have to say this, you know, Siva, you must have come across as a material that, uh, that actually, there's a book, uh, I can't remember the name of the book, but Rodan is actually spoken uh, about Nat the Nataraja bronze. Yeah of the Chola dynasty. So he was actually appreciating the Nataraja yeah. in a very beautiful way. And it, it's, it's, it's actually in one of my documentations, but you know, speaking mm. of Rodan, it's interesting that you brought his name because he has written about the Nataraja in a kind yeah. in a poetic manner, appreciating the stance of the Nataraja where there is stillness and movement at the same time. And that is the brilliance of the Chola dynasty and the sculptors of uh, that era. Yeah. So I thank you for bringing that up, actually. So I, I must add yeah. that, you know, like uh, there is another artist, you know, Alice Bonner. Alice Bonner, uh, you know, like uh, yes. she's also the, the founder of the, you know, the Varanasi University, you know. Varanasi University, okay. So, see, like uh, what happened, like uh, she, they have, uh, you see, from the sculptures, uh, of the Indian sculptures, temple sculptures mm -hmm. and all that, they have analyzed the, uh, you know, the, the, the geometry, you know, the squares okay. and triangles. You see, it's all that you see. This uh, the the bronze, you know. They have all these things, you know, the the signs in it. The the so measurements. They, start, yes. they started analyzing all these things. You see, like if you look into the Alice Bonner's uh, book and all that, she analyzed, you know, the sacred geometry. Sacred you know, geometry, yes. The sacred That's geometry right. yes, in yes. the Indian sculptures. So she analyzed it. See, those days, you know, the sculptures they use the yard. You know, it's only like six inches mm, 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 to do like uh, you know gigantic sculptures and all yes. that. So how Using is it possible? The palm leaf. So they use the palm leaf to fold it in a certain manner to yes. create the measurements. And all. Okay, Shiva. Then we will move on. And yeah. uh, okay, in this part of the world, uh, Shiva, uh, Shiva, lighting designing as a profession continues to be something that we do not. Uh, bring out, bring our focus on on a regular yeah. basis, and but the irony is that lighting design is indeed an undeniable factor, an important factor, and a necessity that contributes to the successful perception of a theatre or dance presentation. Please share with us some facets of your journey as a lighting designer, uh, Siva. Okay, as I told you, you know. Yeah. I see, like when in the beginning, I told you, you know, my experience. You know, first I joined in, you know, wanted to go sketch the dancers. Then I went into the uh, the stage, you know, yes. like uh, yes. then just picked up a lighting design. So my approach, my approach of uh, lighting design is like from the from the painter's point of view, not a theater designer's point of mm. view. So when mm -hmm. when I I design the light, I look at the stage as a blank canvas, as a white canvas. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Same yes. like you are painting just now. We are painting. So like mm -hmm. it's a blank canvas. So we have uh, palettes of colors with us, with the brushes. Yes. Then we splash the colors and all that. The same thing, I pack all my lanterns and my instruments, the lights, yeah, up there. And then like you sculpture them. Like you shade them. Like almost like you d you give the 3D effect. You know, like mm -hmm. you like just now where Mr. Leraja was doing this, you know, the highlighting from the dark to the highlights, you know, where you highlight the, the portrait. The same thing, this is how you highlight. So you don't open up uh, everything. So my concept is like you come from dark to bright. Mm. You know, so mm. like when you light the performer, the dancer, uh, which is on the stage, it's like always give them the side lights, you know, you give them a back lighting and then you give them the face light. So it's so like a reverse painting, technique. Yeah. Yeah. In painting, this I, I like this period of painting, which has happened during the, I think, uh, Baroque period. Baroque is about, mm. about 17th, 18th century, 17th, 18th yes, Baroque around period. There. Yes, yes, somewhere yeah. around there. 17th yeah, century. So Baroque, see the Baroque are like Rembrandt and all that. See, this is where they, they, they play with shadows. Yeah. The Renaissance, there's no shadow. Everything is fully uh, clear, visible. See, when you look into the Baroque artists, they have a high contrast of shadows. You know, the, you know, like Rembrandt is one classic example. 
like a chaos, like high contrast. chaos color kind of uh, yeah high Italian contrast technique. of shadows yeah. they play with the high mm -hmm. contrast shadows so i like this uh, and then i apply this technique into uh, stage lighting so when i light the production i don't give them full light i always have almost like i know 50 50 then i wanted to show the the sculptural quality of the dancer mm. see when a painting when you look into a painting when you give everything bright from the front you know, you don't see a shadow. The painting looks very flat. I'm talking about the traditional paintings. Yeah? Yes, yes, so, yes. You know, the painting looks, I mean, of course, it looks pretty, but then you look flat because there is no shadow. Mm. I think the moment you add in the shadows, you give a different dimension to the, yes. uh, to the thing. So this is where the, rent, the, rent, the Baroque artists explore that. Okay, so the, yes. I, I fell in love with that uh, ism, that you know, the is. Baroque period. And then you, you apply that onto your lighting design I uh, apply concept. that into my stage. And then uh, that is my become my, my style, you know, my signature. So mm -hmm. so a lot of people sometimes complain also, <laughs> how come, you know, the face is all too dark, you know? I said, you know, you, you, you know, like you can't open up everything, you know, it's like 10 people doing the same dance. Why you wanted to lit up everyone? Absolutely. Put them in a different, yes. different intensity of light. Then the, the, some can be lit up from the front, some can be the side, the back lighting. That's why, like, when you look into the the paintings, you know, the like uh, the Night Watch and all this, mm, 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 around, you know, look at that, you know the depth, how they create the depth, you know, it's like you know, as you go further, you become darker, you know, and uh, fading away, that kind of thing. Right, so, right, yeah. So these are the things, yeah. uh, the painting techniques which I use in theatre as well. In theatre, but even to do that. Um... <coughs> Siva, you you need to know the um, uh, narrative so well, right? The story of the production. Oh yes, yes. You, know, yes. It, it, you have to really have it so uh, uh, vividly in your mind in order to execute that. And uh, do you do you put in a lot of effort? I'm sure you put oh, in a lot of yeah. effort. And I think really, painting. Yeah. When we talk about painting, painting is very subject. It's between me and the canvas, you know. Yeah. But uh, when you work on the theater on designing a line for a production, I think it's not only about me. There is a dancer, there's an artistic director, choreographer, you know, the costume elements, you know, the space, everything is just matter. So yes. when uh, I design the line, I think the dance has to be the supporting elements, cannot be dominating, uh, you know, uh, the dancer. Mm -hmm. I think like we just have to enhance the dancers to, you know, yes, make yes. them visible. So it cannot be that, that people, uh, you know, we cannot dominate the dance as well. So it has yes. to be, be a very subtle effect. But mm -hmm. you still do your artistic you know, expression and all that in the yes. light in a very subtle way. But then the, the dancers should be the star, if you ask me. So you're that right, is because right. that is like different. Because I'm the, I'm like, I see like, um, I see things from the dark. You see, as yes. a, when I design, I, so the dancers are on the spotlights, you know. So normally yes. the, the lights are there. But the lights can only be noticed if the dancers comes into the light, otherwise the light will no function. The Absolutely, lights are yeah. the lights right. are there. Sometimes you go into the street lights, you know, it just look dark. But then when someone walks in, then you know there was a light there. There was you light, know? yes. So the lights coming from somewhere, the side lights and all that. So someone walked in, then you see, then only you realize, you know. Yes, so this yes. is the magic of the light. Absolutely, it is magical, no doubt. It's a magical profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Siva, thank you so much for that brilliant, um, insightful answer. You know? thank, thank you, you very much. Now, I'll just move on to the ne next question, please, Siva, which yeah. I feel it is, uh, is uh, very important uh, to, uh, to he hear from you because you sp I just, uh, as you always do, I want you to continue to speak your truth. Okay, Siva? Yeah. Siva, now let us uh, shift our focus to another significant aspect of your creative element. Please share with us your inspirations as a visual artist and on being a visual artist and a gallerist in KL. You know, uh, how you do branding uh, for your art exhibitions and what, is, how do, what are the challenges you face as an artist, being an artist and a gallerist at the same time, you know, and, and then we'll take it from there, Siva. Okay, all right. You see, being an artist, I think like, um, I think you have to be creative. You know, yes. like, uh, there, there's no such thing as like, it is like, you know, uh, you cannot say that, you know, I'm a painter. I know I'm going to, I'm having an exhibition. I want to sell all my work. No, the gallery will not accept. I think like, uh, you know, yes. the selling is a secondary thing. I think the first, I think like you want to be an artist, I think you have to be creative. So in order to be creative, 
as an artist, I think as a visual artist, I think we must expose ourselves not only to one genre of work, not only paintings, you know. Mm. As a painter, I yes. must learn sculptures, printmaking, you know. Now, the modern modern is like, you know, all this uh, computer, Photoshop, everything. You have, you have to be learn. you have to expose to all these elements. Other than that, yes. being an artist, I think we also must go and see theatre. We must go and see performance. We must go and see, uh, you know, go for the, you know, concerts, you know, like yeah. uh, you go and watch opera, you, you go for poetry readings, you know, then you do a lot of readings as well. So that when we are exposed to all these things, I think this will help us in order to create something. See, like um, yeah. sometimes, you know, the painting, uh, the artist creates something, but then like you, there is, there is no depth. Mm. There is no, uh, what do you call it? There is no myth in it, you know? See, when you, you know, everyone can paint, yes, you know? Yes, but yes. in order to be creative, you have to have a message there. What is the message you're trying to create in, the, in that thing, in the painting? You know, so like when you look into Gustav Klimt, you know, the Austrian painters yes, and all yes. that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So what are the things, you know, like there is always the play with symbolisms and all that. So if you understand all these symbolisms and all this, then you have to understand psychology, like a Sigmund Freud, mm. you know, uh, mm. Carl Jung, you know. Then all these elements will help us in order to create. So when you put a cat in a painting, that yeah. is a metaphor for the cat. Absolutely. When you put a dog... When you put a, you know, a bird, when you put a crow, I did a work, you know, uh, using a crow in the painting. But of course, being an Indian, you know, they have this taboo, you know, the pantang, they call it yeah, pantang. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, you cannot put a... Say, I was doing a research and all this. Then I realized, you see, the, the crow is a, is a link to the, the, the spiritual, the, you know, the, the, the world of the spirits, you know, they are the, mm. the link to our ancestors. Okay. That's why they the pitical, you know, they, they feed the crow and all this. Yes, so yes. the crow basically is our guardians, you know, so like they are the link. So they're in between the ancestors. two worlds. Yeah. The messengers of the two worlds kind of exactly. a thing. Exactly. So they are the they are the, the, the link, you know, between this, you know, the world, the spirit world and the, the, the human thing. So then only I really I see like if you, it's all in the mind, yeah. If yeah. you take it, it's going to be negative, definitely it will be negative. Even yeah. the negative, you took it as positive, I think. It, it, it's a different dimension. It a yeah. Abundance yeah. of joy. This is a, that's so when you point. talk about yeah. um, this, what else are you asking us just now? No, uh, uh, Siva. Yeah. I wanted to hear your, because you, I, I, you wanted to, when we had, we had a conversation earlier, you wanted to share with us about your idea of how one should perceive sales and branding. Ah, okay. All right. Well. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So, so the gallery. Uh, so now, uh, yes, see, that yeah, is my yeah. artist being an artist. You know, so I yes. already explained that. Yes. So, so we shouldn't limit right. ourselves. Absolutely. Another important thing is being an artist. You see, now people carry their handful. I think yeah. uh, whatever yes. it is, we should carry our sketchbook. We it's should like have an a sketchbook. extension to our hands, right? The handphone. Yeah. So <laughs> this is like our handphone. We should carry our sketchbook. So we Absolutely. should at least do, you know, about five sketches or something. You know, write down something. You see a flower. You see a glass while waiting for your food to be served. You take the napkins. You know, you do something. You 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 know, like you have to sketch something. You document because every single moment is is a history. You know, the moment we leave, it becomes a history. So, so when we are sitting now, we are talking. This is present. Okay, this is reality. Yes, yes. Okay. After this, you know, it goes into the archive. Then that become a history. Yeah. Okay. But we, this is reality. So we have to celebrate that moment and capture. So that is being an artist. Okay. I think as a gallery, as a curator, you know, when I curate the works and all that, I always tell the artist, you know, it's like you know, you don't expect uh, a sales in the yes. first place. Yes. Okay. First is like we have to see, uh, you know, we have to see the, you know, how creative you are. And the work should be there. The work should speak for itself. You know, the work is strong and, you know, it's very impressive and all this. And then definitely it will move. We don't need to say anything, you know, like good works always get noticed, you know. Yes. So we shouldn't worry about whether I'm going to sell, you know, can you sell for me? My, I think I cannot promise any sales. I always it's tell my It's a very personal artist, thing, isn't it, Siva? It's a very the personal sales thing. Is like, yeah. Sales will come, you know, yeah. but uh, through word of mouth or something, it will come. I think that is by selling a lot of work doesn't mean that, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the artist is established or something, you know, that yeah, is marketing. Yeah, yeah, 
that's marketing important. and uh, that's branding very important to note that yes yeah okay okay that's yeah. branding you see this is now uh, we're talking about a uh, branding so like uh, now you can engage a pr company and all that you know do a million dollar branding and all that and i think that, that branding is different okay we can hype up everything you know you can buy uh, uh, my work you can put in auction you escalate the price then that's all uh, you know speculation you speculate with the artist then you create that but that is not reality you know yes. so you how long this can last but at the end of the day people want to see your work when you do a live sketch that is what you know like the one i opened is you know like elena just doing that's amazing you know so a lot of people now they can't even uh, paint uh, you know, a figure properly yeah yeah i'm yes, sorry to I say know you, mean. Yes, that, you know yeah, see but because uh, to, they uh, mention yes yeah you know what i'm not, it's, it's not getting, i'm not offending anyone but yeah it's a general yeah. general statement that you're making yes so general, yeah. you see why is that like uh, when you wanted to be an uh, architect you have to do a structural drawings you know the perspective drawings and all that's important otherwise you your structure only. the same thing i think the anatomical is very important for being an artist yes. so you once you master that i think after that you can break the rules that's what that's what yeah. picasso yeah. did that yeah you know he went to all this thing that only he come to the cubism and dadaism so he breaks the rules and all that i think we, we can only break the rules if we know the loopholes in the rules otherwise yes. end up in a prison you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> talking about this i would say the prison. artists the galleries i think galleries i think i think is very important i think they play an important role in uh, promoting the artists and all like um you know the, the the future of the artists and all that depends on the gallery as well you know how so i think they know so most of the commercial galleries they will hunt for all this uh, talents who out there right. they know who is the talk of the town and then they will come to your studio and then they will uh, they will uh, buy lock stock and barrel and that's it and then they will uh, they'll find their own clientele so that's why like we shouldn't worry about you know whether i'm going to sell my works or no you should just worry about creating your own work yeah. you know so it's not that you have to work hard but i think you have to enjoy working what you're doing so that is the important thing it's not that i have to work hard you know no i think like uh, you have to have the joy of life you know the joy of being they call it live the joy in the of present life. like what you said yeah. live in the present you see, you live in the present you're painting now this is the thing you know this is your life so you express it and i think like uh, whatever you do is your reflection of yourself you know mm. so the, these things will reflect on your canvas so that will go on that will take care of yourself you know by because right. you are just being true you're not pretentious you're being true to yourself so your inner self is expressed in the canvas and then yeah. that carries away so that will yeah. come you know the money side of it you shouldn't worry i think you shouldn't say to money as well you know money is important as well i think the money side of it will come when there is a the necessity Yes, you're right, uh, Siva. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, we would have to um, uh, put a standstill to this, uh, Siva. Yeah. But I would like to also mention that uh, this aspect of Siva that he's also a fantastic cook. Am I right, Siva? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, beautiful Malaysian uh, dishes, Indo-Malaysian dishes, and that uh, we had the privilege of tasting years ago. Yeah. And no, so, that yeah. I must tell you about this food. Huh? Do you have time? i must tell you about this food see the food expect is like yeah. also like painting yeah i always tell my mates you know when you cook something is like painting you must put colors you put a green vegetable you put a green chili red chilies on top of it you cannot put a green chili on top of it so you it's like impressions you know mm -hmm. so the painting is like that you know you have to highlight a food so you get you know people get tempted and they have a good appetite to eat the food see yes. i become a vegetarian almost like about 10 12 years ago Mm. So then what about I I I didn't miss the non-veg food but then I wanted to convert all the non-veg food into a vegetarian food. Okay. So what are the the similarities you know like if you like mutton then I go for the mushroom or I go for the jackfruit uh -huh, substitutes you know, the tofu and yeah. you know, all these things the indonesians you know food everything because I think Malaysia is a heaven for food you know so like we have so many things Malay Chinese and Indian everything in non veg i convert to vegetarian <laughs> even the sambal i convert <laughs> so so 
So, uh, so that is also thing. a creative aspect, am I right? So it's, I, yeah. uh, it is yeah. a creative because lucky I had a very good mate. So she always helped me, you know, we learn from them. See, mm -hmm. she's an Indonesian. So I will ask her, how did you make this? Okay, they put chicken, they put fish, a squid and okay, remove all that. We put only mushroom and a jackfruit. How does it work? Oh, right. Then the same thing, you know, so just matter of switching it, then uh, I think it's all in the mind. How do you... Yeah, all in the it? mind. Siva, yeah, absolutely, all in the mind. All in the mind. So that's what uh, I went into, ventured into food because like, yeah. I like to eat, you know, I like good food. I, I, I sort of, I enjoy food, you know, so like, I'm a foodie. So I have a group of friends, you know, like uh, we go and uh, you know, look for all these foods and all this, you know, we come back, we'll experiment, we, we do all kind of experiment on food. That's wonderful, Siva, and I uh, uh, really uh, appreciate the way you live your life. And uh, it's a very exemplary way of uh, spending your life uh, within your creative element, which has come very naturally, naturally to you, thanks to your DNA and ancestral elements, blessings, so on and so forth. So I take uh, with such great joy, uh, Siva, I end this uh, conversation with you. And we will continue the conversation on another platform. Certainly. Good, definitely, definitely. Take care. Bye. Bye. All okay, the best bye. to you. Thank you. Thank you.